Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at another classic issue from John Byrne's run on Superman. Cannot wait to show it to you. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and let's get right into it. I love this cover. I think this cover is so cool. Penciled in ink by John Byrne. Um, very evocative of like a nod to like sort of an old school kind of Superman story. Although I guess at this point, since this came out in November of 1987, which I almost just collapsed saying up that out loud. But I suppose this is a classic Superman story. It's funny, when I think of, like, vintage Superman, I think of, you know, like, Kurt Swan and, um... Uh, gosh, who else? I don't even know. Um, never really read Superman religiously or regularly before John Byrne's run. John Byrne is the be-all, end-all for me. I love his run. Totally classic. He was very fond of the, um... Donner Reeve uh, Superman film and that I think is all over this. I feel like his Lois Lane is very Margot Kidder and she's like the ultimate Lois Lane for me. But anyway, so when John Byrne took over Superman after Crisis on Infinite Earths, he revamped Superman. That was kind of what he was hired for. So he kind of got rid of stuff that was ridiculous, tried to make things work, um, reintroduced villains and put his little spins on it. Mr. Mixius, Mixelplick. Okay, so I read in an interview once with Byrne. He thinks it's pronounced Mixius Piddlick, like very, like, um, literally. And I feel like it's Mixelplick. Like, everyone's always said Mixelplick, so I'm going to go with Mixelplick. Um, this is a fun cover. I like, kind of like how it has, like, this box here, and they're kind of bursting out of it. Um, Byrne, every once in a while, does, like, sort of collage, like Xerox kind of art. And I feel like he did this with the cityscape in the back. You know, nobody draws a better cityscape than Byrne, but he would implement that from time to time. I feel a little bit of a nod to some of the Xerox art collage stuff that Jack Kirby would do. Now, this is interesting. I have to say, this is fantastic. I love this opening page for so many reasons. Superman, the name of the game. Superman issue 11, by the way. Um... Story and Pencils, John Byrne, Inks, Carl Kessel, Tom Zioko, Coloring, and John Costanzo, Lettering, Mike Carlin, Editor. So this is Mixaplex showing up at the Daily Planet. A lot of Byrne stories, I feel like, us uh, opened in the Daily Planet. This guy looks like he has to be based on somebody. Hmm. Love the Mohawk. You know, that's like, I feel like we seldom, if never, got John Byrne drawing the Mohawk Storm, so I'll kind of take that. Um... But this looks just like the Beyonder from Marvel Sur Su Superhero Secret Wars uh, Part 2 with his white suit and his, like, sort of mullet jerry curl. Anyway, I love it. I think it's so good. And let's, um, <clears throat> let's give praise to Carl Kessel's inks and John Byrne. I think Carl Kessel is probably one of the best inkers for John Byrne. Um, you know, right alongside, like, uh, a Terry Austin... I mean, I feel like uh, Byrne has had, you know, a mixed bag when it's come to inkers. You know, he's worked a lot with inkers who are very heavy-handed, um, intentionally so, like Klaus Janssen on Wolverine and Tom Palmer on Starbrand. Tom Palmer on Hidden Years was a little different because Byrne was doing more finished pencils there, and I really loved the art there. Um... I feel like somebody like Carl Kessel and Terry Austin brings a more polished work to look to John Byrne's art. Cat Grant, Clark Kent. I mean, I love John Byrne's Clark Kent. I love that he draws hair on his arm and his chest. Remember that? Um, you, I mean, could you imagine the, the editorial on that? Does Superman have chest hair? Well, I don't know. I don't see why he shouldn't, you know... Let's be body hair positive, okay? I mean, look at that monkey. Or gorilla, rather. I'm sorry. I'm not, um, what's her name? Uh, you know, gorillas in the mist. Diane Fossey. Is that right? No, I, all I can think of is Bob Fossey. Anyway, see what I mean, like, about John Byrne being able to draw, like, the most gorgeous cityscapes? Like, look how epic that is. I will take that over a Xerox of, um... And I, th I feel like that's kind of what's being lost in modern art with, like, Procreate and stuff. It's like, 
There's something more exciting to me about busting out a ruler and drawing, like, every window of a building than just sort of, like, whipping it off and procreate, if you know what I mean. Um, it's funny, like, uh, like, the techniques of storytelling. You know, um, every panel has break, uh, backgrounds in here, even the, this one with buildings, but the, you know the details of the building are not filled in because you do kind of have to break up the page in certain ways. And these are visual tricks and cues, which just make comic books all the more magical as far as storytelling and just sort of the, you know, I don't know, almost cinematic things you can do with it. So underrated. I just don't, you know, I feel like comics, even though they're so popular because of the movies, but it's funny how the the comics are popular. I mean, it, like, I feel like that's a misnomer because comics aren't popular. They still don't sell great. I mean, it, I think they've had a good couple of years, but they should be like gangbusters. Like, uh, you know, I guess it's hard to compete with a video game, but <laughs> maybe I'm old school. And of course, I, obviously I am. But for me, it's hard to compete with a beautifully hand-drawn penciled, inked, colored, lettered comic book page that someone poured their heart, soul, and talent into and gifted us with this. I mean, how amazing is this? I love it. He animates the mannequin and, like, pulls her out of the window. This is sort of next level. I love this. This sort of has the feel of, like, an 80s, like, kind of wacky movie, and I kind of love that. So mad at myself. I believe I passed on, like, The World of Krypton when it first came out. You know, when you're a young collector, it's like you only have so much money in your budget. And the fact that John Byrne, like, jumped ship to DC sort of had to expand my wallet anyway when it came to collecting because I was mostly strictly Marvel before that. Although, I, I don't know if I can say that for sure. I think Crisis definitely helped. Um, I don't know, but I love the Titans and Batman and the Outsiders and Infinity Inc. all before Crisis or during Crisis. I don't remember it. It's been a long time, guys. Um, Mackie. Comic book uh, artists are always putting in, you know, Howard Mackie references to their friends and other people in the industry. This is kind of hilarious how um, how many pages were like 12 pages into it and Mixius Pitalik, Mixelplik, hasn't revealed himself or has he revealed himself up until this point? That's kind of crazy to go that far. But I guess he hasn't up until this point. He's the Beyonder. Hilarious. Um, so, boink. And now he's mixed. He is Pitalik. And he is looking crazy. I mean, I don't even know if <laughs> how, much, how crazy I am about this version of this character. Like, it's so hard. He's impish, skinny, little, and like with a weird, crazy hairdo. I don't know. But it's fun. Oh my God, hilarious. Fat Superman, bald Superman. Just strange with the big head. And Alfred E. Newman. Um, he should have said, or mad. That would have been better. Because, you know, mad is like the English word for crazy. So, And John Byrne was born in England, I think. So that would have been a good nod to that. Anyway, uh, old Superman. You know, all the socially unacceptable things here. Big typewriter. Love that. Hysterical. Blowing smoke rings. Well, I would have to think that Mitch's Pitalek was probably, like, the biggest pothead on the planet. Now that is freaking epic. Look at that. So, the Daily Planet, because he animates the Daily Planet, and it comes to life. I mean, how awesome. Okay, um, you know, like, make a Superman movie. This is what DC is missing with Superman. Like, Grant Morrison's All-Star Superman is, like, the best Superman, one of the best. It captures everything so magically in such a modern way, and I think that that needs to be sort of their, you know model for a good Superman movie. Superman has so many fun elements in his mythos, you know, like cosmic, uh, you know, wacky, just sort of science fiction, um, you know, and just 
everyday common superhero. I mean, he is the first best superhero for a reason after all, people. Why can't you get it right? I don't want him dark. I don't want him evil. I don't want him in a black suit. Screw you. Make him beautiful, gorgeous, the big blue Boy Scout that everybody loves, and you will have no problems. DC. See, once again, loving the Carl Kessel inks. You know, he, um, such a master of his craft, like always implementing different techniques, like with the hatching and the tones and the stipple and the screens and things like that. So, and once again, Cat Grant, totally love Cat Grant, Cat Grant. See, like, the little detail in this panel of this unhoused person sitting there eating a baguette that is always in every single grocery bag and every single movie and every single comic book. I mean, it literally is just a decoration. Anyway, another freaking classic issue from John Byrne's run on Superman. How great is that? Introducing Mixoplick or Mixius Pitalik. Either way, what do you think? Leave in the comments. I mean, that should be a lit uh, comment section. The trying to explain to me, how do you pronounce Mixelplik? I mean, I want to see that. That That's not going to cause any problems at all. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel, hit like, share my content, and I'll bring you more later.